So right, the moment of truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. It's been a while that we've been working on this car. As you have seen earlier images of it and some videos that also Burak made. This is made out all out of carbon fiber. And then uh, it's been a hectic couple of years built because we have used whatever we have learned all throughout years of racing in the race circuits, offshore power boarding, in the off-road racing, everything. And we have combined all into the build of this car. And hopefully it will be a good performer still uh, on the street and on the track. This will be our first time uh, rolling out the car off the garage on its own power. And you will hear now a cold start. <laughs> and thanks for having us. Uh, no problem, with pleasure. <laughs> This is one of a kind, 1974 Corvette convertible and it's all made out of carbon fiber and we have done a lot of work on this car. First we have almost completed as you have seen it in out of fiberglass and start taking molds off of it and then build it with the uh, infusion technology out of carbon fiber. So the whole thing is for example the whole rear end weighed like 14 kilos or something so everything was quite lightweight and we didn't do it actually to gain weight but you know for the pleasure of making it out of carbon uh, but then again obviously it came out quite light I don't know exactly how much it weighs now because we're just completing the uh, installation on the car we will soon wait and then I will give you the information on that one but for example you know this whole thing is a little bit enlarged out of the normal size of the rear wing. The rear lip, we have extended a little bit uh, the rear bumper so that we can accommodate two radiators in the back. There is a radiator uh, as the secondary for the uh, main radiator of the car and then the supercharger radiator on top of it with fans. It's sitting in here. In order to be able to fit the radiators in we had to change the fuel tank so we have designed a complete new fuel tank with an extra capacity almost 125 liters so this has this is sitting right behind here and then the radiators under that behind that and we have accommodated a complete new rear look we've used the ZR1 uh, tail lights with LED lights in it we have also another third brake light in here we have a Chevrolet Corvette logo. It's a uh, it's a logo with a light. So when you turn the lights on, this also <laughs> lights up. We have a rear view camera here and uh, a proper functional diffuser with four super trap exhaust pipes in between. This is more or less how we built the back. Here we have built two flaps, if you come close. Uh, these go up and then when the temperature of the engine uh, builds up, then the flaps go up in order to get extra air into the rear radiators.
and we also have air channels coming through the doors we pick up air in here and then make it go through another channel we built inside the fender we pick up extra air in here and then we channel it into the radiators in the back We have also air extractors inside the fender wells uh, because there is an air building up inside the fender when you go in high speeds. So we wanted to take it out through the rear of the fender wells and that's what we have built in there too. So there are no fake vents or oh, no. air holes on this car like no, in no. modern cars? Uh, this side, when the air comes through in here, before it gets diverted into the radiators, there is inside a rear end a differential cooler, another small radiator in there. So that first goes through the uh, small radiator, and then you know whatever is ch channeled, we will go into the main radiators or the uh, auxiliary radiators. So this is how the back, more or less, is designed. So. When you come close here, you will see. Oh, the fuel Before tank. Before we move forward, yes. Yeah. The That's <laughs> we have. There are some really nice. Touches. Yeah, we have a little bit logo designed on the uh, fuel cap, and we have another fuel gauge here in order to see the level of the fuel before we start refueling. And then when you come by the doors. You have another, again, logo engraved into the door uh, openers. We have used... Yeah. We have used a small uh, aerodynamically designed box in order to uh, put a rear view camera uh, instead of the mirrors. And we have incorporated a signal, turn signal underneath that. So this is like, you know, very aerodynamic let's say and we have here the baseboard which also has an uh, intake for uh, rear uh, brake cooling it will be ducting into the uh, rear brakes this air in uh, exit here also uh, gets the air inside the front fender and through that air will exit through here in order to empty up this extra yeah. uh, air that gets stuck inside yeah. the fender wells. Release the pressure so that you won't go airborne <laughs> in yeah. your car. Uh, I will give you a simple example of how efficient these two are. Uh, when Callaway designed their first uh, Corvette with the twin turbo engine, this sledgehammer, sledgehammer they called yeah. it. Uh, C4 Corvette. They, they, they increased the top speed by 25 miles an hour by only opening up the fenders and letting the air out at those speeds. Yes. So it's very, very functional. You know. And uh, I mean, for people who don't know you, uh, actually you've been racing for many years on offshore boats, so you are familiar yeah. with the concept of lift. <laughs> yes, yes, I <laughs> Which <know>. is not... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I've spent uh, many, many years racing in offshore power boats, catamarans yes. especially, and we had to deal a lot with the, you know, aerodynamics and hydrodynamics then. Yeah. <laughs> now it's mo mainly aerodynamics. Yeah. Yeah. So front lift is the yeah. thing that you fear the most, I guess. Exactly. Wanna... But the design of the Corvette is so exactly for to keep the front lift down, you know, as you see that any air will hit the car, will push the front down. So it's, it's designed already for that. So this is an important part of the design of the Corvette from the very first days of it. And we have just, you know, improved it right and left yes. maximum. That's all it is, you know. And uh, we have maintained the uh, pop-up headlights and uh, more or less a little bit uh, different uh, 82 Corvette style front bumper, which we have changed uh, again. Uh, we have designed another uh, spoiler underneath that. And then we have the obviously the big hood that we couldn't avoid. <laughs> uh, this 
when you put the big engine inside you have to either leave the engine sticking out of the hood or just design something that takes the engine inside and then that's how we could sort of try to hide as much as we can you know we have designed the air box inside the hood that uh, takes the air straight into the engine uh, with this air box hopefully the power will go from 755 to 780 as mentioned in the Chevrolet uh, racing uh, book so this car will have 780 horsepower <laughs> available when you want it <laughs> and, and it has a 10 speed transmission yeah. behind it so it's going to be a fun car to drive once we get it out on the street and the engine is a uh, crate engine lt5 yeah. from gm lt5 yeah gm untouched brand new yeah yeah yes. untouched we don't want to i don't want to touch it i wanted to keep it as original as it can yeah. so that less headaches no problems yeah as it goes it's a dry sump engine so we had to modify the firewall in order to accommodate the dry sump uh, and then you know we had to do a lot in order to get this engine into this car you know i mean not only the engine everything else you know the, obviously the yeah. transmission is bigger so we had to re, uh, redesign the transmission tunnel inside the car so things really uh, we had we do we did a lot of cutting yeah. and chopping of this uh, on this car but finally they all came out quite nicely For example, we have uh, 22 inches wheels all around, 335s in the back, 295s up front. We have uh, SLS AMG uh, Mercedes brakes up front and rear. I mean, the size of the rotors are like 16 inches. These that was that was the <laughs> wheel size for us <laughs> 10, 20 years ago. Bigger than the original <laughs> wheel. Exactly, <laughs> and then. Uh, the hard top we also uh, played a lot with the hard top i i made it with an extra uh, head uh, room in, i built an extra headroom into it and a little window here and obviously it's carbon fiber it's half the weight of its original hard top and then to give you an idea about the weight of the you know carbon fiber uh, parts that we used in this car the whole door skin you know the outer skin of the door without the metal part inside just the door weighed 1.2 kilos when we <laughs> when we pulled it out of the plug you know i mean so everything is quite uh, lightweight we have designed the whole interior the door panels you know the whole interior it's got little dust now uh, momo steering wheel designed uh, for the 50th anniversary of the hot wheels so we use this steering wheel in the car the rest is uh, more or less my design. Yeah. That's how I wanted the car's interior to look like. But just one thing with the steering wheel. I mean, I love how you have adapted the original. Yeah, original cap, horn cap. Uh, yeah. Horn cap from the <laughs> exactly. Corvette. So we put Momo. the two Recaros in it and some extra seat beds from S Sparco. And we have air conditioning. We have a Bulgari watch in the center with 12 uh, you know, uh, buttons that operate different things inside. And we have a very, very strong stereo system built in. We installed an iPad inside, so we can use for everything else. You know, I mean, you can yeah. put music, you know, navigation, whatnot. And we also put a small pad to charge the iPad, wireless charger. And that's about it, more or less. A very strong stereo system from Focal. Uh, when you're sitting on the driver's seat, and then you wanna take it out to the track, and you want to obviously see these gauges uh, in a just a simple uh, look. So that's what you do. This way they will come towards you so you can have a clearer view <laughs> on the gauges. How about that? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just one of the crazy one, details. Once you are done, thing. they will go back. <laughs> Yeah. So what do you have here? Like oil temperature? Yeah, yeah. We have everything more or less. We have air fuel ratios. 
the fuel pressures, the, the walls, the transmission temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature and the uh, brake temperature. So you also want to close the monitor your brakes when you're on a racetrack. So you got all of those and this is the GPS speedometer mm -hmm. and then you know the antenna is right here. So once you are out on the track you can use all those information. And the Alcantara has a very oh, yeah. nice uh, contrasting yeah. mm -hmm. uh, going on with the old carbon yeah, yeah. fiber bits and pieces. A lot of carbon fiber in it, yeah, a lot of carbon fiber. A lot of efforts, a lot of time and then <laughs> finally <laughs> the outcome is quite uh, daring, let's say, you know. Yeah. You can use it in the, what, uh, Batman movies <laughs> if you want, <laughs> wherever. And could you please speak about a bit more about the dash what will yeah. you have it's a race pack uh, it's got all sorts of racing information in it let me turn it on quickly for you here you go you got everything in there and you can see the side uh, cameras showing here in the monitors and here we have the iPad and the 12 gauge with 12 buttons there, there I put all the information of what button does what you know so that I don't have to uh, write it on here on the carbon fiber it's easier like uh -huh. that's better like that more clean and I added another plug that says that I have recreated all this by myself <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing is like that I'm just the interface on the iPad is yeah something I mean yeah, I designed that too. <laughs> <laughs> rather than having yeah. some ugly writings on the carbon yeah. fiber it's very neat so this is how everything turned up This is a race boat actually that uh, I I've turned it into a pleasure boat. Uh, I got an inspiration from the Lamborghini Murcielago. So we have duplicated the whole cockpit area with the flaps that are going up and down just like on the Murcielago. We have also duplicated the rear engine hatch on the car into the boat. And we have clear engine room uh, covers so you can see the Lamborghini is inside it's a 43 feet catamaran which can run easily 160 mile an hour <laughs> <laughs> it's now for five people it's got complete Lamborghini interior we have duplicated the whole interior so we have put two seats up front and then we have replicated another three seats for the rear passengers so we have now two hatches to go into the boat one for the rear seats one for the front so it's got full Lamborghini interior and then Lamborghini engines and then the Lamborghini boat more or less <laughs> designed. And also the Lamborghini nose as I can oh, see. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything is there. <laughs> but of course just one minute of talking won't do justice to this speed. I know, but so. you have to go out all the way to Barton to see the boat because it's sitting in the factory site there. Yeah. I mean, w wouldn't be a problem for me. <laughs> or <laughs> maybe <fine>. once <laughs> once summertime comes, uh, we will bring it in here and then we will do another episode with this one. Okay. <laughs> okay.